Ladies, do you want to explore your sexuality and experience true sexual healing? The Vagal Orgasms Masterclass teaches you and your partners how to unlock your full sexual potential and awaken the G-spot, the sacred spot, and the cervix for an unforgettable sexual experience. Would learning how to finally surrender and release grief, fear, and uncertainty benefit your outlook on life, love, and relationships? We certainly think so. Common misconceptions of the G-spot, including its anatomy and function as an erogenous zone, will be covered in this course. Plus, we're going to teach you seven different massage strokes for the G-spot that dissolve blocked energy and increase your pleasure tenfold. We're going to teach you how to locate the sacred spot and the best methods to stimulate it for maximum pleasure. And you're going to learn about cervical orgasm techniques, which are the most powerful and also often elusive style of climaxing. You know, this class is primarily geared toward women, but men have taken it as well and learned so much about how to pleasure their partners. So get ready for multiple, multiple, multiple O's, my friends. And you can get all of that at sexreimagine.com forward slash female dash masterclass. And for being a listener of the show, we've got a beautiful coupon code for you. It is 20% off this course. Just type in podcast 20. That's all caps podcast 20 and get yourself a great deal on this on demand course. Man, y'all did it again. You keep on liking, you keep on subscribing, and you keep on commenting on all of the incredible episodes that we try to put out every single week. Thank you so much for your support. You have come to another episode with Dr. Willow Brown, Leah Piper, and the Sex Reimagined Podcast. Today, we are so excited because we have this shame. I have the hardest time saying sh- it's like starting the name of their show. Like It trips up my tongue every time. So, do over. We have the Shameless Sex Podcast ladies here yes. today, Amy and April. Man, it was still hard to spit it out. You but, did a great uh, job. Take you it away, great... Willow. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have so much fun listening to us yammer away with Amy and April. Those two shameless sex girls, they just published a book last year, and it is a very cool book. We talk all about it and how to utilize it. And you're going to love this episode. So tune in, turn on, and fall in love with Shameless Sex. Welcome to the Sex Reimagined Podcast, where sex is shame-free and pleasure forward. Let's get into the show. We have the amazing, the amazing, the popular, the Shameless Sex Girls, April and Amy in the house. And we are so excited to talk about the playful parts of sex, the deeper parts of sex, and all the things that go all the way around the world so that we all become better at sex. Because who doesn't want to be a great lover? Who doesn't want to have so much pleasure? And who doesn't want to feel adequate and confident when it comes to things in the bedroom? Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We love you two so much. Mm -hmm. And it's such a pleasure to see your gorgeous faces. We're just sad it's not in person. I know. But it's okay. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. Maybe we can do the one on your episode that we're going to have next year. Yeah. 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 Yeah, In May. It was really fun. This morning we had um, a high school friend of mine who still lives in East Lansing, Michigan, my hometown. And today we have you two ladies and Willow who both live in Santa Cruz. So, so it's like a friend kind of a day. theme. Yeah. yeah. And April's from the Midwest, too, so that's perfect. Yeah. That's right. I haven't been so back So how's the so weather long. today, just out of curiosity? Because here in Sack of Tomatoes, it is gorgeous. It it's is gorgeous. Loves, yeah. It's beautiful. It's Sack of Tomatoes probably ha- might have the same. It's hot. I was yeah. wearing yeah. a fur jacket walking my it's dog crazy. this morning, sweating bullets, and I was like, what yeah. am I thinking? I, I know. I had too many hilarious. layers on on the beach yeah. this morning, too. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you know, I want to figure out how to film the podcast outside when on it's beach. gorgeous out, yeah. you know? I know those, like, fuzzy microphone covers help yes. with um, outdoor sound. Have you guys ever experimented with so, filming outside? So we, love. we did so uh, on Sarah Tom Chesson's podcast, the, right. fuck, the Fuck Yeah we podcast. We did it in the pool. So, well, no, we were going to. So here's why um, we didn't actually do it in the pool. So we, you know, we you have their little, I don't think, you, maybe you all have the same portable Zoom recording box. Anyways, we were going to record them in L.A. She has one of those Doughboy pools. And we we're gonna be in, naked in the pool or in bathing suits. That's what's called a doughboy pool. The doughboy, the ones that sit oh, I yeah, stand, that stand on the ground. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That is called the above okay. ground. The but above, anyway, yeah. good to know. Too. I yeah. just learned hey. something new. Thank yeah. you. The above ground. 
And so, but we forgot our little recording box. So all is four of us too. We're like, shit, we can't go. How are we going to do this? We have to be plugged into a laptop, but you're not going to be in a pool with a laptop right there. So yeah. we had to all do uh, four humans, also four women, one mic and pass it around. Oh. It actually worked really well. You did it, but you did do it in the pool. No, we no, didn't. We ended up uh, being in the pool and then realizing that we forgot our equipment. Yeah. Uh, and that was like, so you had to get away. dressed. You had yeah. to get out. Yeah. You know, we didn't, in no, bathing suits. Because yeah, it okay. was hot. So oh, okay. it Anyways, worked out. We should the work. Was good. Let's work on this. I think I have a good pool in Santa Cruz that we can go to if you all come here for our show. Okay. And we can and finally that's do the pool of my in the house. Pool. Oh, because yeah, so you're very nice. Your 4.0 episode, we can come Ooh. do it in, in my pool or in my hot okay. tub. Okay. Well, I'm not and, paying uh, tribute with my computer for that. Okay. No, no, Someone no, we'll else bring has to pay box. tribute. I will. Okay. I take right. my we, computer into the pool all the time. So, all right. I love I love that about you. As long as we have the recording box, we don't need a laptop. It'll be all good. And right. if the okay. recording box Amy's dies, got it's not covered. Yeah. Well, I we need it. a laptop if we want it to be. All we need is a pool. We have oh, a that's pool. True. We a have visual. a recording. Box. Yeah. Yeah, you we could just want to watch us in the pool or the hot tub together, especially if we're naked. Yeah. <laughs> we might be a highly might rated it. episode. Yeah. All right, I'm everyone, saying. stay tuned. That's Amy next will be time. topless. Well, I'm probably naked. Anyway. I'll be naked. No, yeah. I'll be naked. Yeah. I don't. I don't Definitely like naked. It gets better. It gets, yeah. it, it like gets better sound that way. Yeah. 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 Well, so you know, one of the things we're here today to celebrate is the book that the two of you published. Please tell us the title. April, what's our title? Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> We have to it's read. called Shameless Sex. We trademarked Shameless Sex a long time ago. That's the name of our podcast. However, the subtitle is long. Is <laughs> choose. I'm right, gonna look at it. Choose your own path your every time. to unlock the sex life you've been waiting for. There's a reason why we don't have it memorized. Everyone, it's long. And we also <laughs> changed it like three times. And yeah. um, because Choose Your Own Adventure was taken, so we choose your own pleasure path. Though there are lots yeah. of yeah. different That's paths like locked down yeah. to go and get into pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about these pleasure paths that you outline in the book. You know, it's an interesting thing because it took so long to write the book, two years, uh, because Amy and I and the publisher, they've been in business for, what, 40 years? They were like, we've never had a like this. And this so, was written past, present, and future. Very right. Confusing. And then <laughs> you have to, you go and you you can flip to the pleasure path that sounds most, so you know you have different, Um, we call it the CYOPP, yeah, you know me. Choose your so, own pleasure path. Yeah. Choose your own pleasure path. We're like, choose your CYOPP. And so you can look at which one or the the several or few, and there's about one to sometimes five at max that you can walk down and then flip to the the page. And sometimes it has you go back. So it's like if you okay. want to learn more about um, how to please your partner, or if you think you have uh, maybe some trauma that is unresolved, go to this chapter or this okay. page in this chapter. So it does guide you. You could read it cover to cover easily. Uh, and we recommend reading it cover to cover. A lot of people have, and they said they really enjoyed that. And right. It's, it's kind of playful and entertaining. It's not just like, so here's no. what, it's not just like your average self-help book. And I'm April, sure there's a lot of fun stories in there. There's like, stories. From the two of you. They yeah. actually, the editors yeah. cut out like half of our stories. So like, that's a lot we, of we blah, were, blah, blah, blah. When, when, we, when we committed to the book, it was like 75,000 words. And that's we had to wanted. keep it over, limited. Yeah. Well, we, we gave them 100,000. 100, <laughs> And no, like, I did the same thing with my book. I'm like, here's my book. And then I would yeah. cut it in half. And I was they, like, no, here's my book. And she's like, that's two to three books in one book. Yes. Half yeah. of my book, which means there's like five books in there. They were like, yeah. you have a there's weapon so much here. To say. They're like, this is a weapon when it's over. I was like, that's true. You could yeah. smack someone with a 100, with, I guess, thousand page book. So just an example of what April is talking about using the CYOPP. So say one of your sex questions would be, it's a super common one, like I can't orgasm through penetrative sex. And it might be like, what's wrong with me? Or am I normal? Or am I broken? And then it would give you these. So we would talk about it for a little bit. And then it will give you these options. Like April said, you know, anywhere between two to five of, you know, what it, what's the outcome you want? Instead of us saying, okay, you can't orgasm from penetrative sex. Here's what you should do. It's more like, well, what's the outcome you want? Do you want to learn how to orgasm from penetrative sex because it's your ultimate desire? Like you feel like it'll create more fullness and aliveness in your life. Do you want to learn to do that for your partner just to please them? You Do you, so we'll give a, like all these different options and then you decide where, what you want as the outcome. And then it tells you where to go to learn more about how to achieve your so desire. you're kind of flipping through the book. You're flipping forward. You're flipping back. Kind of makes me feel like it's like a like a tarot deck. Like you can kind of just open to any page and just read something and learn something, and it will t take you on its own adventure. It yeah, like. I exactly. like that it does two things. It works with two different ways that people's minds work. It's for those of us who are a little more linear. Like I like to read from front to back. Front to back. Um, I'd probably read it that I, way I too. I get nervous if I skip a section. Like there's FOMO <laughs> arises. 
where other people are like their mind is like more all like over the place. They're more creative. There's some spaghetti going on in there where they want to flip here and flip there and go back and forth, and they don't want to waste their time on shit they don't give a shit about. We, yeah. Well, we totally. also, and exa- you're exactly right. I always read the end of the book first. You do? I'm like really? a dark and stormy. Wait, tell me more about, sorry. Because I don't, tell if, me about what that. if I get <laughs> into a fucking accident and can't read or you something? Want so you want to know, know what happens in the what end. Happened. Oh my God, I'm so curious what that speaks to in your personality type. That's I don't yeah. know, Amy, but yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, what's your human design She's like, that? bottom line it for me, people. Bottom line it. I don't like surprises, and if I have them, I'm usually suspicious of a surprise. I'm like, a surprise How is coming. How interesting. So, uh, but this is not about me. I just wanted to tell you that from cover to cover. I will start with the back cover, read the last bits, and then be like, okay, now I'm ready. And um, also, we had something uh, that we thought would be an extra bonus offering throughout the book, which are pod boxes, because each we have hundreds of podcasts at this point in time yeah. like mm-hmm. uh, like close to 400 right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. um you can't go in depth otherwise you're going to have a 3000 page book about right. each topic yeah. so we reference pod boxes which means people could go to that specific podcast they're like i really want more information okay. on oh, oral or tantra smart. so they're like we give so they can reference that and then go oh, deep into fun. more knowledge on that specific topic mm-hmm. um and that's something that is pretty fresh and it is broken down we think it's an easy read for most people uh, and it's not going to be super clinical. I get a little bored from and yawning with, over clinical with stuff. The clinical stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's so funny. I've known you guys have been working on this book for since you started working on it, right? And um, and I had, but I had no idea it was sort of this like choose your own pleasure pathway. And mm-hmm. so funny, Lee and I just created a, a freebie, a free gift, which is exactly the same thing. Choose, choose your, your own, own adventure. adventure. Yeah. So yeah. it's just it's in the field. So we just have three choose your own adventures. But within this book, there are five pleasure pathways, right? That people can go down. No, no. it's different for every question. So it's broken down okay. into eight different chapters or themes. That we So we looked at, you know, 400 ish. I mean, at the time, probably 300 episodes. And we looked at also the, all the sex questions we were receiving. So we get them, you know, many, many questions a week. And we were looking for the themes, right? So like this question while it's asking about, I can't orgasm from penetration, sometimes it's saying, am I broken? Sometimes is, am I normal? Um, whereas some other questions are like, how do I become the best lover? How do I talk to my partner about, about wrong, sex? I want to cross dress. What do I do? Yeah. Is, am I, is something wrong mm-hmm. with me? So, but mm-hmm. even, so yeah. So, but there's some that are just more like, I want to spice up my sex life. And some is like, am I broken or is this something wrong? Or and, some people are like, I just started these pills. I got a life altering surgery, like yeah, because chronic, they yeah. need it. For, for chronic pain uh what's wrong with me i can't i can't feel pleasure anymore right there's so mm. many different so, that, yeah. yeah so what we did was we we looked at that we broke it down in these eight chapters that we saw like here's the most common themes and then we rearranged it to see like what needs to happen first it seems like am i normal and am i broken needs to happen before how can i be a master lover right, right. and yes. some people could Step just go one. to that how can i be a master lover chapter because it's also feel broken yeah, and it's it's also designed to like access over and over again. Like right now, maybe I feel like I'm all good, so I don't need to look at this book. And then six months, all of a sudden, I have some chronic illness, and I need to go access the book again. Or yeah. I have a new partner. How do I access that? Or or um, or you want to be a master that. lover, and then you're reading the CYOPP, and then it's like, yo, go back to this is normal. something. <laughs> yeah, if this is something really hard for you, maybe you should go back to this chapter. Yeah. And we just okay. it's and all relearn suggestive. the basics. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Foundation is key. And because so also so often when we get really advanced at something and really good at something, we forget the basics. Mm-hmm. And then when we bring the basics, you know, the foundational work back into our sort of high level of, of understanding and mastery with something, it takes us even higher. So, yeah, exactly. And a master, a true master never stops learning. Mm-hmm. That's true, too. So, hey, <laughs> that's hey, kind of that means we're mastery, all true right? masters, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. If you don't have a love of learning, then why bother? Yeah, exactly. you know, because there's so many things to discover and and. uh and try on. So tell us a little bit about like what are some of the deeper um, topics, subjects people are dealing with as they're looking through the book? What are some of the heavier stuff? Clearly shame. Shame, yeah. shame and trauma. Mm-hmm. And this yeah. is something, remember, there's no hierarchy. We all know. And I know when you all um, started your podcast, uh, you also said like shame. That's like keeps coming up, especially in sex, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And trauma as well. And that's interwoven. And sometimes... Um, they can go hand in hand and sometimes it can be completely separate things. People might have not a lot of shame, but a lot of trauma or um, 
a lot of shame and maybe a, a little bit of trauma and they're not sure. So that being said, uh, it was a bit therapeutic, at least for me. And I know for Amy as well, mm -hmm. walking our, our, through our stories a little bit, it's remember, this is not centered only around Amy and I's uh, experiences. Cause we're just two humans, uh, with just of our, our two separate two experiences. experiences. It's yeah. not a memoir. It's not a memoir, <laughs> yeah. but we did, we do weave that in just so people understand we, we have, uh, the ability to communicate um, from our own design of what uh, we went through that was shame or and we're still trauma. going through <laughs> and that we go through, which, you know, it, this isn't live clearly because it's printed, but there are always going to be things that come up that can mm -hmm. trigger this past shame. So that was therapeutic and I think helpful. And I think people can more relate to both of us because um, we are very exposed in the book and vulnerable about some of the things that we uh, experienced going, growing up and also in, in our yeah. 20s and 30s. What, what are some of the things that you can name that through this process of writing this book, you were, it's like revealed something about you. Is there something that you can name that kind of surprised you like, wow, this is saying this about me and my experience or what did writing the book give you? Let's take a quick break. Are you an online coach, expert, or industry leader wanting to drive social and cultural change without anxiety, procrastination, or overworking or burnout? Keep listening. I am Sheridan, a nervous system specialist and founder of the podcast Embodied Entrepreneur and the Body-Based Business Method. I will help you become an embodied entrepreneur who builds an anxiety-free, profitable business that creates transformation from the inside out. I recommend you start with fan favorite episode number 39, How the Sympathetic Nervous System Response Sabotages Profitable Business on Embodied Entrepreneur, the podcast. You know, I realized for myself, so I'm, you know, raised in Santa Cruz, not everyone raised in Santa Cruz is raised with like a big open minded, um, you know, upbringing about sex. But I, mine was right. Like when I wanted to be sexually active, my mom was like, you, um, I we can get you on birth control if you want to get on birth control. My dad didn't give a fuck to the point where actually that's a problem because I have daddy issues. But so there was no shame about being a sexual person. But I didn't have any information about, um, you know, pleasure, how to ask for pleasure, my worthiness and pleasure. And so writing the book, uh, I think I before the book and um, I had the story that I don't have a lot of shame and trauma around sex. Uh, and after writing the book, because like April said, we had to um, have to, but we chose to d discuss some of our own details about our, our past, our history. And I had forgot about some of those stories. You know, they're not necessarily like non-consensual acts of sexual violence. But a lot of coercion. I had one that I mentioned. Yeah, I was yeah speaking for myself. Yeah. Coercion, not um, choosing myself. Yeah, um, not saying you know yes or no, or when I was feeling a no or yes, uh, and having experiences that did shape me and affect my sexuality that I had to or chose to un try to undo and still yeah. am. Um, and you were really that. young. One of them, I mean, you, I think that the that first penis I touched. Oh my god! Yeah, she was like twelve, and it wasn't. It was that was coercion. A, it was a coercion. It was it thirteen, was, but it was, it was coercion. a forced yeah thing. Yeah, and it wasn't forced. It was well, he forced. Well, it says in the book, he, he forced. He, yeah, he he asked for a back hand. massage and then flipped over and is like, "Will you rub my mm. stomach?" And then just took my hand as like a jack off device on his cock. But the reason why that was problematic mm. was because he was not a nice person to me. He was mm. my friend's twin brother. He would pick on me for being a lower income family. And he was from a wealthy family with, you know, his mm -hmm. dad is like the local judge. We have a lot of those. But um, and mm -hmm. so it was like, I'm scared of this person. And now my hand is on their cock or penis. It's a penis. They're 13. It's not a cock, everyone. And I don't know how to say otherwise, because what will happen if I do? Yeah. Uh, and so I kind of just forgot about that and how it shaped my life later on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I it talked about so interesting when you start writing these old stories, out, like what comes up? It's like this unearthing of, wow. I mean, every time I read or rewrite my rape story, some other layer comes through. It's insane how it well, just continues. And also reading our own stories separately, yeah. because this book was written 50 50. Like people have asked, like, how half did you? Half, yeah. And we would write. Uh, each chapter and then go over it again like so Amy could kind of frame it out and then so we're, we're like living and then I would go in and, and beef it up and add some humor and and the things and then she could go over it again and then I would go over it so it was like double the work layered. but yeah but it was layered but reading her double story the living and then really like <laughs> going into living. her story and then also what I'm sharing with my story and like 
we had the one of the editors. Um, we didn't have a ghostwriter anywhere. Everyone, there's no fucking AI. No AI. We don't trust AI for sex advice. <laughs> no, no way. No way. Uh, so uh, if, if that's a question, then know that that did not happen. But we had two editors that helped refine the stories. And they were like, we think this needs an explicit warning for people because this mm. could bring up trauma. And we didn't do that. We kind of said it in the beginning. But I talked about something that happened to me when I was 14, like a forced blowjob. Mm. Um, situation and I didn't ever talk about that before and um it's funny because I just was like oh it's fine and it was someone right. that I was dating but he was 18 and I was 14 definitely didn't want to stir the pot and it kind of you were it's, not into sucking not sucking cock but like getting blowjobs for a I, long time I after had that. never yeah and I'd never been even I would only made out with someone and had like my my one of my breasts touched at one point at like that time yeah yeah, yeah. I, it's not a boob then 14. Just, yeah my yeah. titties. My titties. Uh, <laughs> the, so that was that was quite um, traumatic as well for me yeah. to write it, meaning writing it. But I never, ever thought about it as a traumatic experience when I was uh, up until that point, up yeah. until when I was just like a human, a civilian walking around. Well, I imagine that process of of writing together and kind of going over the stories together, going over each other's stories really, I mean, you guys have always been very, very close since day one that you met, but brought you even into more intimacy with one another and more closeness. In your own relationship. And almost sometimes wanting to choke each other out. Oh, we should have got mm -hmm. a therapist. We forgot. Just, if you should have started write a book, the book. Get a therapist. Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. say if, that. if you're writing a book with an... Actually, you should get a therapist if you're writing one by yourself is, is my thought. But if you're writing with someone else, and you know, April and I work really well together. We love each other so much. And uh, we also had a lot of moments. We're, we're great at communicating. Sometimes we're like, and then we work through it. But uh, mm -hmm. we could have really used it for for both reasons, for our relationship with each other and then all the personal stuff we're uncovering, which is yeah. a huge thing in our book that one of the CYOPP answers for or not answers, but um, the suggestions for the outcome you might want often says find support. You know, go work uh, with people also, like Willow and Leah or find a therapist. The stress, though, that was involved with making deadlines, I think what was an extra that's an a layer. extra layer yeah. that was mm -hmm. that that did impact both of us um, in a way. And we have other jobs too. Yes, <laughs> and I'm a procrastinate. Call, you can call me procrastinating Patty or whatever, because I I work well on deadlines. But then I'm staying up till four in the morning. And Amy's like, I already finished this like a week ago. It's waiting for you. Did you finish that? And I'm like, I'm like, I will. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So and then that's why you read the back of the book. And then first, we always <laughs> say our. I, yeah, she's like, I'm just getting to the head of the game. <laughs> Our partners, too, were were like, we'd be like, we're going to be gone for three hours. We're going to do some book eight stuff. Eight hours later. <laughs> eight to nine hours later, we I'd come back and he's like, oh, yeah, really? Like, I'm not to talk like, to you. I don't really? believe you that you're three hours. So everything took twice as long. Was there any creative obstacles in terms of how you envisioned the book or along the writing process? Were there directions that one of you wanted to go and the other one didn't want to go? No, really? I think so. Oh, which is yeah. su quite surprising. And in our our editors worked really well with us. Like they saw our vision. That's what. Or not editors, sorry, our publishers and editors. Though they saw our vision. That's why they they chose to publish this book. Uh, and we had a, we came up with this. So we we finished this book last year, twenty twenty three. We came up with this concept in two thousand eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, the the CYO. We didn't know it was choose your own pleasure path. It was like oh, a choose your own adventure book that is self help nonfiction for sex and, and fun, relationships like a map. Um, but mm -hmm. we weren't ready to write it. So we already had that mapped out. And here's what we did, and which I think is very smart. We and it's also um, you know, a good way to take a vacation but make it a business right off. We went to Mexico three times to work on this book. Mm -hmm. With That's our little no distraction. Yeah. It was yeah. like with I'm our bad. dogs. It was awesome. Yeah. Then we'd go to the beach, have a couple cocktails, yeah. come back, write the book. Yeah. And we hammered out really good work then. And yeah. and I think what we did Great is idea. we we started with the the foundation pieces of um you know not like let's just start writing the book which I think a lot of people do they start writing a book and but we also started by you know getting um an agent very quickly when we had this concept and so we started with just like this the kind of the mission right here's the mission statement here's the layers and then we work from those places and we were pretty much um yeah very connected I mean our proposal was so different because it was a lot about us when our actual proposal it had like the framework but I think we sent Willow maybe the proposal back in the day I don't remember um maybe not but at it, yeah. yeah it's a long it's like a long-winded so that yeah, don't that, look at it as long-winded. No, and there's so many errors in spelling. I'm like, really? I felt like we spell checked. 
Uh, but that it Somehow was the framework <laughs> and the idea was there and the publishers loved it. There was actually like a, a, a bidding thing going on between different publishers for it because that's what they do. They take your proposal to auction for folks that want to write books. Um, and that's so, what your agent did for you. Yeah, our agent did. Our yeah. agent yeah. took yeah. it to auction. Yeah. We don't know yeah. how to do that. They, right. they, he took it to auction. Not, and not the publishers. Did yeah, they're not. No, no, no. no. For, but there for were all you are bidding. trying to write a book and in yeah. the book writing world. Let's get yeah. it clear. Usually you find an agent after you have a proposal. We did it the reverse. The agent not found the us, told us he, we should write a proposal. And we're like, we do have an idea. Wrote the proposal. He brought it to auction. And then um, that was when the, the bidding thing started. But they liked it, but it's totally different. The, the book took, it took um, sort of its own um, identity as we dove into the content. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the whole process that the, the way that you guys did it is really smart and um, and very unusual. Most people do not go that route. And, you know, you have to have a, a large platform to go that route, like yeah. to, for an agent to just be like, yeah, I'm going to help you find a publisher. And now you should write a proposal and an mm -hmm. actual book, you know, usually goes the other way. Someone has a manuscript and then they find an agent and then the agent helps them find a publisher. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, you guys were really fortunate to do it the way that you did. I think mm -hmm. we could write a book on um, how to write a book how and the things to book. expect after. It yeah. starts with get a therapist. It starts yeah. with a therapist. <laughs> it ends with ask a lot of questions. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it, it's it's because it is it is where it's the hardest thing that I know I've ever done. I don't want to speak for Amy, but we, we haven't birthed children, though. We so call, that, we call but... it our our 309 page turquoise baby. Aww. Baby. We had a baby together. It yeah. is. Yeah. 309 pages. How many words? I think they brought it down to 75,000. Yeah, we cut out 25,000. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's, that's okay. a lot of words. I'm it comparing is. it to mine right now. Mine's in the hands of, of a publisher at the moment. So, do you know what yours is? Yeah, do you know it. the word count? Uh, not off the top of my head. Okay. I just pared it way down. It just took huge chunks out of it. One of the questions I have for them is like, should I take out my personal story? Should I take out my rape oh, people story? People want that. No, no you yeah. can refine it and just keep refine some of the details. It. I might right. need to just refine it. That's yeah. what we did too. We had I agree. to do that with a lot. nonfiction. I think yeah. you really need to, the the audience, the reader needs to feel like they know you yeah. mm -hmm. and and yeah. and get invested in in the author. Mm -hmm. and their expertise and then when you add a piece of personal story i feel like it especially when it's a vulnerable story yeah it mm -hmm. makes you feel like this person's your friend yeah and yeah. there's a part of you that's doing intimate work by reading this book and and trying to reflect and see yourself in the process of the book obviously something draws you to a book to make you buy it mm -hmm. and in the personal growth world i think it's important that it feels like the author to the reader is i get you yeah you know like i get, I get you and yeah. you want to feel or, like you're getting the author i don't understand you and i want to learn more yeah, yeah. like right. what is this person right. but right. the personal yeah. story is so i'm this i know you are interviewing us but i have a question for you too because you guys you both work with clients and i know at least in the the therapist world you know, it's it's highly encouraged to not share your personal story with people. Yeah, that's why I'm not a therapist. Exactly, <laughs> me too. So you do this, right? That I would think, not work I, for us. I, I do. I think, yeah, with clients, right? Like, they, they really resonate with that. It helps them that. trust you more. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I think I'm coming more from the framework, and probably why I overshare is I like teachers. I kind of feel myself more as a teacher than a therapist, although yeah. I, I work in the therapeutic realm and help people with obstacles. But... um when my favorite teachers are the ones that tell their stories mm -hmm. to show the example of this is where I was and this is where I'm at now because I just yeah. find it to be extremely relatable. And I also like it when a teacher's humble enough to go, I fucked up too. You know, yeah. I'm my shit's all fucked up still. And it, mm -hmm. it just makes me feel like I can trust them. Yeah. And and it, it puts um I don't know. That's what I'm attracted to. But but I do get we interview a lot of therapists, as you do. And so it's interesting to see the ones that are like very clear they're not going to tell any part of their story. I don't know. I just don't trust it. Yeah. I guess I, I get that, that that world, they must have a good reason for not doing that. And I guess that's because of all the projections that the client could have on the therapist, but it's just not my style. I don't know. I don't trust. I, like, I think most of those therapists are wounded healers, the psychiatrists. Most of us out all there. are. <laughs> all I mean, are. yeah. <laughs> if you're trying, if you're, if you're claiming it to be a healer or, or a therapist, like, I feel like everyone has a story. There's no way you grew up in a bubble. I mean, bubble. We're, we're wounded. We're wounded. These podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. And never. I. I don't claim. I don't. I don't work with clients. Um. I choose not to. I just yeah. got my sex ed certification. I was like, oh hell no. <laughs> I have. I take on people's energy 
really deeply. Really oh my yeah. God. And so I like will be, people will write something like a question and I'm like, oh. it starts crying. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, which is which is lovely. But when we're podcasting, like, please, can you just not cry right now for like. Oh, my God, um, I cry on our podcast all the time. Yeah. So I'm so curious what kind of um, feedback you guys have been getting since the book has been out. Uh, is the and also is the audio version out? Yeah, yes. The okay. audio version's out. Here's yeah. out nearly when the other book came out. Is it came out at the same time? Mm-hmm. Same time. Um, okay. So we we read the audio version ourselves, everyone, oh, and we cool. we uh, switched every other chapter. Uh, we were both pretty terrified of doing that. We we're pretty good at talking freely, but when it comes to reading word for word, especially me, it's April's hard. much better it's at hard. it. It's hard. It's quite yeah. hard. But one of the interesting things was when we were reading because we were doing every other chapter. So I would be reading parts that were like you know was something that April wrote in there, and so like we were talking earlier about you know having to relive each other's stories too. But it was actually a really yeah. cool experience, um, and so yeah, the, uh, the feedback I've been getting, and I, I'm, I think we have the same feedback, but you can elaborate what you've heard has only been really positive. And some of the people that have shared their um, positive feedback about the book are people I really highly admire, like other mm-hmm. authors or sex educators or therapists. Um, actually. Uh, my partner was just telling me that there, um, a, a, someone he knows was in therapy in Santa Cruz and the therapist recommended our book. I don't know what therapist yeah, this is. That. That's so. great. Yeah. I met someone on the chairlift when I was snowboarding that was a therapist. And um, we were talking about, this is not this year because I can't because my knee, but last year. And I was just like, oh yeah, I teach people about sex and relationships. That's what I say, right? That's what I tell people. And they're like, oh, no way. I'm a therapist. And I was like, yeah. She's like, you know, my best th- my best resource is just giving people podcasts. And I love this one called Shameless Sex. Yeah. And I, my, is I have my goggles and my helmet. I was like, yeah. I was like so stoked. I was like, no way. She's like, oh, my God. She like oh, fangirled out. I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. So oh, I love I love when other therapists recommend um, us or you all. Yeah. Like, that's so important to share resources, especially yeah. when it's free. And yeah. um, that's awesome. I'm I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I I when I listen to the Audible uh, uh, book, I don't do those uh, for, uh, ending first. By the way, just because okay. I'm reading a book. <laughs> That'd be funny. Um, but uh, I I thought it was really funny and mm. comical, and we both read well. And 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 reading your story was so cool, and hearing you read my story was really cool. And I and I was laughing out loud sometimes at some of the things um, that we said that are just like. We have a lot of really witty, funny um, ways to talk about, like, put on your safety, put on your safety mask. Like you're going to slide into home talking, making it like a baseball reference. About, or right. Wolverine. Or Wolverine. Wolverine. Like, get your Wolverine costume on, everyone. <laughs> it's like that's, time it's a hairy pussy, into... everyone. It's a hairy yeah. pussy, yeah. which so, we love. Fun. And I love the humor that we could weave into sometimes uh, things that are difficult. For folks yeah. and and but not in a way that's making fun of any we never do that that would be more shame ing behavior and we weave it in um and i think in a way that is really um playful it's in yeah. two it's and also so, like with intention mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i think you guys have a really fun way of being irreverent which it really actually works because in sex and sexual education because sometimes we take it so fucking seriously Right. And the topic can get really heavy, really fast. Mm -hmm. And so you got to bring levity to it. And I think that's where like both the sacred and the profane really go well together and having that be a good balance. Mm -hmm. You know, we were on a podcast not too long ago and um, the interviewer was like, you guys have had the shameless girls, (laughs) shameless sex girls on your show. And we were so impressed. I'm like, all right. We we forget like people like uh, we cannot believe. You're on our show. We did like a bunch of uh, like, shows. Why, why wouldn't we be on your show? Uh, yeah. <laughs> With these, yeah. these two yeah. British women that were super funny. I can't remember. Honey Dooney. Oh. Was that oh, yeah. that one? No, Come oh, Curious. No. Oh, so yeah, Come, come Curious. curious. Yeah. I listened okay. to that episode. That was a great They episode. were so funny. Yeah, and they're I was like, fun. They yeah. were fangirling out. And we're like, yo, you all are so cool. I'm like, I don't even know. I'm like, I just think that we're just Amy and April doing our thing. Just like hanging out with you two. I mm-hmm. love hanging out with yeah. you. It's like we're, yeah. we're friends. We're deep like amazing mm-hmm. soul sisters in my opinion so mm-hmm. thank you for having yeah. us again and um talking about our book mm-hmm. dope that you all um that you are are proud of us too oh yeah. i'm so and, proud of you girl you know so by proud. the way for you listeners out there if you want more of amy and april come and watch both of their episodes we did separately we did one with april all about the sex toy industry she is an expert it's fascinating and then we did one with amy anal with amy um so get your booty um all yummed out and listen to both those episodes speaking of which amy's mom just sent me in the mail as a surprise a um 
unicorn uh, tail butt tail plug. butt plug. That's glass. It's it, glass. Yeah, it's the the, the plug wait, part. The but, plug. but then it has a tail. In yeah, it. so like then it actual, has a tail that like unscrews, so you can like clean it. But it's like this beautiful because wow. I was obsessed with My Little Ponies, and we did an episode uh-huh. about anal, oh, and I cute. talked about. I just really would love to be a pretend My Little Pony. So my mom's like, I'm gonna send her a surprise plug. gift, and she's like, oh, that was the last God. one that exists. They discontinued. I got the la- very the last, last plug, gosh. but it showed up in front of my partner's three step my my th- stepdaughters, but they're his three daughters. They're yeah. all over the age of nineteen. Everyone almost twenty, and then to twenty nine. And I was like, what did I get from this company? And then I had been on a trip. I was in Idaho and I opened it up and I was like, no, like, what is that? I was like, this is a unicorn butt plug, everyone. (laughs) And their boyfriends were there and they're like, what? And then I like passed it around. It was the most, I think like I was, well, they're that used was the to most you, shameless thing. Yeah, they're used to but it. But I yeah. don't do that in front of that. Like, I'm not like, hey, look at my butt Normally, plug. yeah. yeah. It right. may, at least it's not gently With the boyfriends used. there yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they they, they, they definitely fun. loved it. So um, thank you to, to your mom, Janice, purepleasureshop.com, everyone. L- leave thank it to you, Janice. Mom. Leave to it to Janice. That. Yeah. Oh, you um, just you wait. When you come on our show, you talk about some things. You're gonna get some special gifts. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. You know, I've got a question for you. This is a question for me on a kinky podcast yesterday that I was being interviewed on, and they said, "What's your preference? Dildos that are shaped as penises or dildos that are fantastical in their myriad of shapes? Everything Ooh. from you know all the various exotic shapes mm. that dildos and butt plugs come in. So I would pose that question to the two of you." I, so I'm not really, so, okay, th- this has changed a little bit. I used to say that I'm not really that into um, inserting something in my, in my pussy, in my vulva, in my vagina, um, that is not human. Whereas when it comes to the butt, totally into it. All the plugs, all the beads, great. Um, yeah. But for some, I wasn't, wouldn't feel a lot from it. It was like it needed something else. And then um, in the last like six months, what I you know, like super horny Amy solo play night. And I was like, I need all the things. And so it was like, I'm going to use my vibrator on my clit and I'm going to try this other curve. Did you suck? Did you suction it to the bathtub? And like, no, I did not oh, okay. suction it. It wasn't, it didn't have the suction. So it was, it was actually a, a vibrator, but I didn't put the vibrations on, but it had a curve. So it doesn't look like a penis. It doesn't look realistic, but it was curved up. So it could get to the G spot G area. And so I'm like milking my, my area, my G spot with that. And then I'm using the, the clitoral vibrator had a muff, Flowing orgasm. So my answer would be now that I actually am like, oh, I kind of like those things. Not not realistic, but it still has a curve of some sort. Curves. Not too big, not too thick, but not too small. Just right, like gold. Yeah. Just right. Yeah. Big yes. bear's porridge. Just yes. yeah. Uh, interesting. I just really wanted you to picture you uh, on your bathtub with all. I'll of do these that for devices, you next time. Suction and like just backing. You know, April, up and I'll trade. Can you yeah. record a podcast yeah. while yeah, you're doing you do that? that you know what? Same time. We're gonna trade photos. And tutorials, and photos, please. please. Yeah. We're tra- we're gonna trade photos of me doing that in exchange for April sending me a photo with her the pony butt plug. I think that's a fair oh, that's trade. a good exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just think, send them to us. Too. Yeah, we'll I, don't I leave just, us out. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna walk on the beach in Santa Cruz with my swimsuit bottoms on and have it hanging out of the back. That's a good idea. I think my plan. Kind of be like wow. a Kimonami move, you know. Oh, just standing up. But like right. it's it's like butt lifting instead of yeah, yeah. Vaginal vaginal lift. Lift. yeah. Maybe I could use my crotchless panties and put it in my <laughs> vagina <laughs> and have it just hang out <laughs> like just I'm birthing it. right a in bunch. between your sh- she's got a she's got a dangler, a dangler. What about um, you with your dildos? April? Yeah, you'll get some attention, I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh my god. I'd look at that. I really won't do that, everyone. Um, <laughs> why not? I'll think about it though. Uh, so for this question, uh, to be honest, I have never been a big dildo user. I use sex toy after sex toy after sex toy, and I would say that if I had to choose, they're like the the funny comical ones. Like there's like or the big fist one. Have you ever seen the big fist? Yeah. It's actually mm-hmm. like a hand. Those are just fun to look at. And then they have all these whimsical characters. That dragon company, Ooh, yeah. they make all these like dragon characters. Mm-hmm. And they're just yeah, like, I seen that. they're like statement. Yeah, they are. Some every- of them look kind of pokey for your. Yeah. In- and then yeah. they do. Yeah. There was like a. Uh, if I'd like want to a- put a dragon in my vagina. Yeah. I it is the year though. of the dragon, though. Yeah. Yeah. It is the are. year of the dragon. Then there's also companies that make like Doc Johnson makes these. Um, I think they still do these like comic book characters and I don't think they have the rights so they kind of change the names a little bit like the incredible hulky you know and it's like uh and they're hilarious 
So I don't know if I want to insert that into my body. I'd be into inserting that in someone's body that wanted me to. Yeah, oh, it's almost go. like it should be like a, a sex toy garden display. They're not yeah. things you really use, but they're things you admire and laugh at and um, get inspiration from, maybe. Yeah, maybe they're just waiting there to be there. used someday. Yeah. Things some things Some are practical, some are impractical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like yeah. the question, I'm though. still just a fan of the good old uh, the honey dipper, the crystal wand. Oh, yeah. I like, oh, yeah. I like the oh, yeah. My favorite combo is the honey dipper and the, um, the V-Fit, the infrared. Oh, oh I love the V. I love the Joy Lux. Yeah, we yeah. That's, so that's the one I, I was talking about. Yes, that's what I, I love that. Infrared, I love that one too. And if you've got a mirror nearby, I mean, your pussy never looked hotter. Right? I yes. mean, clitoral cupping Thank device too. Remember the clitoral cupping device, and you were like. Uh, I gave to you, and I was like, Do "Oh, that was the this? whole vulva cupping." The vulva, then, yeah, but sorry, it had the little cupping. tiny one for your clitoris. Yeah, for just yeah. The clitoris. I did yeah. try it. It was uh, interesting. A couple of times. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. I was just curious. I don't know if my vulva needs a lot of cupping I, at this point. Yeah. I actually was wishing when I use I, I mean I like the Joy the Joy Lux, but when I did that whole thing with the clit vibe and the Joy Lux, it kind of felt like there was a lot going on, and I wished I had the crystal one, which I I don't have right now. Um, because it's not huge and it's easier to maneuver with. If you, I guess at the same, if you're using a and then, then the ergonomic handle too. Yeah, yeah it's good. It's just or nice. enjoy those. Yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy uh, does the stainless steel version. They have little handles mm. on the end too. Those oh. are heavier. They can actually help with uh, your pelvic floor strength because oh. they have a good weight to them, mm -hmm. and they're stainless steel, so they warm up to your body temperature really nicely. And it's a weapon if you need a weapon. And it is. It, they they weigh quite a bit, but they do like that weight really does help. So I would say. I don't consider that a dildo, but I guess it could be considered a dildo because it's like a dildo is like a non-vibrating. Yeah, that's yeah. not vibrating. Right. Yeah. Those yeah. are cool. So it's like N and then joy. Mm -hmm. um, those are cool. Yeah. And there's like a there's like a isn't there like an anal hook? They don't make an anal hook. No, but okay. but there's other brands that make but anal hooks. But they do a lot of like um, anal butt plugs, right? With, yeah. yeah. Um, They're beautiful. Yep. That are metal the weighty. I have one. I haven't used it yet. They're there, awesome. There's something about the temperature and the weight. Um, I think has stopped me from trying, but I think I shall push through that resistance. Just sit, just, just sit just... on it for a little bit if you want something warm. Mm -hmm. It'll okay. warm up. Sure. I mean, don't you don't have or to sit on it in your water. butt or just put it. Yeah, yeah or just in, hold it for a few minutes and it'll yeah. metal will warm up. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. weighted part for anal, I don't know if this applies to vaginal necessarily, but for for anal actually can help you to hold it in better as long as it has oh. a thin neck. The part that the, the neck is the part yeah. that goes through the um, anal canal. If it has a thick neck, that's a different story. That's not designed to stay in for a while without it, like, pop it out. Yeah. Well, glad we covered that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case, you know. Yeah. I'm curious about what's in the book that, you know, is more of a, a vanilla nature, right? Something mm -hmm. that is sort of light reading. Let's take a quick break. Hey guys, what would it be like if you could last 10 times longer when you're having sex? We are going to teach you how to gain massive confidence as a lover, all without performance anxiety, gimmicks, or prescription. This course is perfect for you if you've ever been mortified by a sexual encounter that ended way too early. Or if you've ever avoided intimacy out of fear that you won't last as long as your lover desires. Or maybe you long to give your partner multiple orgasms, but can't last long enough to make that a reality. Well, good news. We've got your back and it's in our course last 10 times longer. Go to sexreimagine.com forward slash last dash the number 10 X dash longer. And for all of our favorite listeners out there, we are giving you a discount 20% off y'all just put in podcast 20 all caps podcast 20 to get your 20% off of this phenomenal course that you're going to want to review more than once. We cannot wait to see you inside this course. Plus, don't forget, we always got tons of bonuses. See you there. Um, I, The communication chapter, I think, the, is, yeah. it is, it depends if you call that, but it's vanilla in that it, it applies to every single person you could use it with conversating with your parents yes. or something if you oh, wanted okay, to cool. but it's centered okay. around difficult conversations around sex but you could apply it's called the connect formula so it, that's an acronym that stands for what the connect formula is and it's all centered around communication and amy's nice. right it is something that you can apply we center it around sex but amy and i developed that um together and um then there's the small asks and big asks mm -hmm. which 
also could be applied to, you could use it at work. You could uh, use it for any it, situation it, too, I imagine, yeah. Sorry, yeah. say it again. For I was going to say, oh, well, not only just any situation, you just mentioned you could use it at work it, yeah. as well as in the bedroom. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. We don't yeah. say that in the book because it's specific. I mean, you yeah. could though. You could apply those pieces, and that's in chapter four, which is um, our you know a pretty thick chapter. Yeah, because um, communication applies to every other part huge. of the book, yeah. and then it also, and so when, I, when you said the vanilla piece, like who who th- in this world thinks that I'm the best communicator ever, and I n- don't need to learn to think about how to do it any differently. And if you are one of those people, come talk to me. I don't believe you. But I've heard a couple of people say I, that, and I I don't believe you. Because I had someone tell oh, me I they were they were healed that about that, myself. Do you, oh, of course, Willow. Of course. Again, the you know the teacher that doesn't ever have to learn anything else, and I think that it is just so applicable to all aspects. It, like April said, in sex and outside of sex. So if you're vanilla or you're super hardcore kinky, that would all apply. To you. I met this dude right. the other day. One of my friends' partners. They're breaking up. Thank God. Um, <laughs> but he was. I was talking to him about something, and I was like, oh, I like talking about therapy and and different realms and and reading books. And um, he's like, well, I don't need any of that. I'm healed. Oh, hey now. Well, not like, not gonna fuck that guy. I well, like then. I, I totally went a little. I went a little passive aggressive. I was like, "Wow, that must be so nice for you." <laughs> I am oh, really. That's a, I like that you said that. But beca- I was like, "Wow," I'm like, "That's a true gift." And I was like, "Fucking full like, of shit." Like all yeah. of my like radars were going. That's how I felt. I was like, "Wow, I'm gonna clap like a drag queen for you." Because I'm like, "No, bro. Yay. Who is healed?" I was like, "OMG." So I just had to bring that up because. There are some people that do believe that they do not have any work to do. Uh-uh. Yeah, and I think those people are just afraid of the work. Yeah. And it just kind of comes down to um, you know, having it's, to, it's like a defense mechanism. Yeah. Oh, I got nothing to heal. It's resistance. Yeah, mm-hmm. it can be really hard to dive into this work and to, and especially if you've kind of done a lot of the deeper layers of it, it you know, you, sometimes you do want to just be like, okay, can I just be healed, you know, yeah. and claim that. And I think there's power in that, too. But, yeah, there's always more layers. There's always deeper to go. That is the whole premise of Tantra itself is expanding and evolving more and more and more and more and more beyond what you ever thought you could. And within that evolutionary full expansion, there's going to be contractions. And so um, I think it's it's hard, though, if somebody's kind of going through a breakup or they're going through a tough time for for to want to look at those deeper layers again because it it can be a lot of work and it can drag up a lot of old emotions well we probably also all know people whose path is just not going to be to be introspective in that way like their path yeah. isn't to go to therapy their path yeah. isn't to like dig up the deep stuff like that's just not a lot of people yeah they're that's just not their thing that's not yeah. what they're going to do that they don't they're relate not. to that yeah. my mother asks why when i tell her i, I go to therapy she's like why? What's wrong with you? <laughs> right. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, this is what's wrong with me. Yeah, this is why yeah. I'm in therapy. <laughs> Thanks for giving me Surprise. an example, mom. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Oh. So Aww. one of the things I know that you've designed the bur- the book on purpose is so that it's a, it can it's good for a lot of different ages. It's not like it's just good for those of us who are in mid-age, but it's also good for like teenagers, yes, and also like people who may be in their 60s who are discovering the adventure of sex for the first time. Can you say a little bit more about that? People that are in LTRs, if you're in a long-term relationship or you are you're uh, single or you're, um, I mean, honestly, I would be comfortable giving this to even when my youngest stepdaughter, I call her my step, I'm not married, but they are like, I love them so much. So when she was 15, I would have given this to her. Now she's 19. Um, and the girls do, do all have copies, but I don't know if they read them. I don't need to um, like micromanage their reading. But yeah. I felt and they have this different um, 19, 25, 29 and different perspectives. And they do ask a lot of questions. And I'm like, check out the book. And, and they have um, the oldest one has come back. And so they like, oh, that's awesome. And then can I have another resource on this? And then I think I mean, I'm in my I'm 41. Uh, you're in your late 30s, Amy. And I would if I didn't write the book i would still buy that book and read it and then my mom bless her heart um and i love her to death uh she read it and she uh, there was some things that she was triggered by um that's probably the personal stories the personal stories um and but she said she's like i am really grateful for what you put out and i'm really proud of you and she she was proud and um she's like i'm so um, proud of you and amy and 
So I think like, and she's in her sixties. And mm-hmm. so, yes. And, and if and you aside, have an open mind, I think you, you will benefit from it. Well, and aside from her being proud, she, deep down, she, you know, that some, some proud people don't admit like I learned things from it or, right. yeah. but it applies. Like you all you said, and April said too, all ages, you know, regardless of whatever your age is, maybe certain chapters. And it's not about age though. Certain chapters or parts will not apply to you based on just where your life is at, but that could change. You never know where you were going to be. Whether it's even with the same the per- partner you're with now, or if you're single, or if you're single now and all of a sudden you have a partner, the, everything's changing. Everything is a different day. And so you might have a new obstacle or it's not just obstacles, right? It's also room with desires. Like, you know, there's the things that are like, this is hard. There's also the, I want the fun stuff. And that yeah. could be applicable from 15 to 80. What about or med- 90. medications? We talk about medications because the sex at being the largest. We're other doctors. We're not doctors. So. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's not. I mean, but we do have research, um, uh, some research in there as well. Um, backing up the statements and the thing was and we had cross check you have cross checkers right on all of this stuff so it's uh, accurate information it's not just like hey siri tell me about who right it's uh (laughs) it's actually uh, quite researched and um there were just pieces of of information from doctors about what ssris do to which is our depressing um, antidepressants antidepressants when you're depressive uh a depressive uh depressed you take ssris they affect uh your genitals and your arousal uh, on Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people on ssris nothing wrong with that they serve a purpose however um you could also have some sort of um you have a mobility issue really blood affects pressure. yes mm-hmm. erectile yes. function um, yep. beta blo- beta blockers mm-hmm. um all of those pieces affect your uh they can affect your arousal they can affect your libido birth control so we mm-hmm. we can't address every single thing but there is a section um with some accredited doctors that we trust about um how to maybe maneuver through that and of course it does come down to a lot of this stuff especially when in terms of health um, and I hope that changes at some point in the United States, but you do need to invest sometimes in out of pocket because a hormone replacement therapy, intimate health, isn't necessarily covered by doctors and, um, no, insurance. Or health and, insurance. Yeah. Or, yeah. Thank you. Uh, health insurance and, um, yeah, you paying out of pocket is, is that it's expensive and costly. And so sometimes the doctors won't even give you, um, the, the Western medicine. And I know Willow, um, has her, you know, you're like what you do is amazing Mm -hmm. and i do believe in eastern medicine so much um and we didn't tap into that because that could be a whole nother book right that's a whole nother book a little bit it's not in there there a little bit yeah it is in there a little bit we have it we have a part when it comes to um you know wanting to learn to be like a better lover there's a whole part on tantra and good um yeah we did give willow a huge section it did they like edited it down and we're like they oh they cut it they cut Willow they cut they Those, cut and we were like out God oh that would have been the fourth book I was ever mentioned in. not, own, not oh, all of it they no, did where like got got read. tantra could be so long and we couldn't yeah. really we not couldn't do that um, yeah, I'm gonna look at it. well yeah, I shameless together. sex part two yeah exactly Choose your own sacred sexology adventure <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are gonna write the book yeah, yeah, yeah there you go, there you go. well endorsed. um would you have a favorite chapter. Um, hmm. I, I absolutely love the, I think it's chapter seven, which is the, I like, I like the fun stuff because, well, it's fun, but I love it because what we did with it is chapter seven, right? Yes. How can I have, yeah. How can I have a hotter, steamier, um, and more connected sex life? What I love about it is that we go through not all aspects of sexual life, but all the ways or a lot of the ways that people spice up their sex life. So we have this whole part on Tantra, on kink. Um, on anal sex, all kinds of things that are outside nice. of like the standard, like the missionary, the penis goes in the vagina. And I just, I loved writing that because that is, I don't know, I can't speak for April, but I feel like that's where we really shine. We're really yeah. good at like, here's all the how to's, all the things you can try. It can be so- <laughs> like yeah. a little kid writing it. <laughs> it's yeah, like, bringing I, the joy to sex. Yeah. Yeah. Bringing yeah. the joy to sex. And sex hopefully can be joyful for most. I love, so I, I do uh, in, enjoy the reading that chapter. I also like the introduction and then this shameless sex philosophy because there's a lot of really funny uh, and kind of like what to expect from the book. But then our philosophy, it's like you should stop shooting yourself is one of like the the subtext uh, titles because we were going through the should and should nots that people do. They 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 go through those things in life like I should be having yeah. sex with my partner all the time. I should right. be orgasming. I shouldn't have too many partners. Mm-hmm. I should, right. right? So 
There's mm-hmm. all of these things that so you, many of those. There, yeah. there oh, are. And so we're like, you should stop shooting yourself. Maybe yes, this should I be think, the last time. I think I've had all those shoulds you just mentioned. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I we both uh, did as well. And so, yeah. um, and it just gives you a, a great, I think, feeling and vibe of what you're going to expect. I know a lot of times when I read books and it could be my ADHD squirreling out um, consistently, but I get so bored in the prologue and the, and the I'm like, okay, get to the point. Can I flip what to are, the next chapter? Yeah. Get to the end of the book. Yeah. yeah. Stop it's describing the room. The la- yeah. yeah. Right. But we, d- we don't. We sort of give you what to expect and just kind of let you know who we are and and then chapter seven's awesome. And and honestly, chapter eight, super short. It's it's a the last the last chapter, um, but it gives you those just proactive tools to take with you. And there's some forward. Yeah. The, the where you can come back anytime and keep that that uh the logs and the fire of your um sexuality and your desire and how to keep those logs lit and burning and and not turn into smoke and, and coal. Dun dun dun. Keep and with yourself that, toasty, people. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, this was so, so much fun. fun. Yeah, we love we love having, having you. We always have so many fun conversations, and we just we go all over the place, and it's a treasure. Feelings mutual. We're show, excited to do sure. it again with y'all on our show, I and I'm I'm still going with this idea for the naked pool party podcast. I'm down. Okay. You have let's a pool- do it at Leah's. Yeah. Yeah. Let's oh, just yeah. Sack. Super, super hot. Oh, yeah. 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 And now, um, although, you know, what's interesting is I'm actually have a hair appointment in Santa Cruz around that date, but I could reschedule it so y'all can come up here. Or we could do um, Santa Cruz. Or we could go there. Yeah, yeah, we can, yeah. I know a pool. I have a pool too. It's, it's the public okay. pool. Just kidding. It's not. My, my partner's ex wife has a really nice pool. I can ask her if we could use it. Ooh, okay. ex wife. What's up? She's cool. I love her. There, there'll be a pool episode in our future, y'all. That's so right. uh, That's stay right. tuned for stay that. Tuned. And, yeah. uh, Check out the episodes that feature Willow and I, and there's a couple with just Willow on the Shameless Sex podcast. Um, We'll have all the links in the show notes for you to buy the book and check out their show and their website and all the incredible work that they're doing. I believe you guys have started some retreats for women, yeah, in Mexico? Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll be in Tulum. It's our second one, and we're aiming to do them twice a year. We probably will do a couples one at some point or all genders, probably couples, all genders. It sounds like an orgy. Um, but yes, we're doing those two in beautiful places. Yeah. All right. Yay. Right on. Coming up next is The Dish with myself and Dr. Willow. Please stay tuned. And with that, love, 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 shameless sex girls, Amy and April. Ciao. Now, our favorite part, The Dish. Dish time. Dish with April and Amy, the shameless sex legends. That was fun. We always have lots of laughs when we get together with those girls. We do. It's so fun. It's like it's like we just you know, we go all over the place. It's really sometimes fun. I wonder what the listeners, you know, what what what's going on for y'all out yeah. there. Like, write in and let us know. Do you enjoy these episodes where we're just bantering away and going yeah. all over the place, or would you like us to be a little bit more on point, <laughs> specific? Right, 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 right. A little more centered. And plus, like we all talk so fast. I mean. Those two girls and me especially. Talk you, the fast. three of you. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm lucky if I can get a word in edgewise. I think I said one thing in that episode. Which is totally fine. I don't care. Yeah. Well, it was exciting to hear about their book and know, hear about the I'm book so journey. Proud of them. I yeah. remember when they started this podcast, I was on their very first season um, way back. I think it's six years ago now, I want to say. And I just remember it was like it was a dark, stormy, rainy night in Santa Cruz, rainy afternoon. It felt like the middle of the night and went over to April's apartment that she was renting at the time. And and we just sat there and talked about Taoist sexology. And uh, it was really fun. And I think I was on their show every year since. So maybe I've skipped one year or maybe two years. Something can't okay. remember. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, we'll make sure that those episodes are in the show notes, the ones that you were on. I think you did one. What were the topics? Do you remember? I, I was always around Taoist sexology. What, yeah. what is Taoist sexology? How do you use your um, your lunar cycle, your relationship to your menstrual cycle, your relationship to the moon cycle to create a better, healthier relationship with your sexuality, which is what I'm always talking about. And we did an episode on cervical orgasms and sort of transcendent pleasure and the cosmos. 
going to the cosmos when it comes to pleasure and climaxes. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about with them next on their show? Have you talked to them about our topic? Mm -mm. No. Okay. What should we talk about? Well, I listeners out there, what would you like us yes. to talk about with them? I I really want to talk more about male sexual sexuality okay. and I love it. you know some of the mastery that men can kind of take themselves further into some of the techniques for them to become more multi-orgasmic and separating orgasm from ejaculation. Thought that would be a fun topic. I also uh, thought about something on the pattern types, which is probably oh. something they don't have anything on. They probably like, don't have anything on that. Yeah, yeah. like the safety strategies we that should talk we about implement. That. Yeah, that would mm -hmm. be fun. Yeah. Uh, and those were a couple things I had floating around. I think also it might be fun to talk about the difference between Tantra and Taoist sexology. Yeah. Um, so that people have a reference for there's all sorts of different um, traditions, ancient traditions that mm -hmm. have to do with sex and how they complement each other, how they're different, and also mm -hmm. like how they are the same. Yeah, that'd be great. Might be interesting. Lots of good ideas yeah. for sure. Yeah, I like I like their. Um, it's so fun how they did this whole choose your own pleasure pathway thing. I know. That <laughs> I'm like, hey, we just did that too. You know, I had no idea that's what their book was about. As they were writing it, I was like, what What are you guys writing about? Is it like your stories? And they would always say, oh, no, our stories are boring. I'm like, oh, come on. No stories are yeah. boring. You know, I was thinking about today that um, those trainings that we've put together, which I want to tell people a little bit more about, were uh, in terms of like, you know, being on the theme of choose your own adventure. Yeah. We've got one series. And so you'll be able to go to the website, um, sexreimagine.com, and uh, you'll click on the whole choose your own adventure section and you'll be able to choose um, three different categories and you'll get multiple trainings each category has like three to four I think one even has five trainings um, one category in terms of adventure is obstacles right the things that you are wanting to overcome when it comes to pleasure and sex another one is those who are interested in sexual healing and then we have one that's on intimacy so you should check that out. And I think if you want all three adventures, it's like seven bucks, nine bucks, something like that. Yeah, totally um, worth it. So get a bundle for free, y'all. So many amazing resources out there, y'all. So many amazing free resources and so many really wonderful, affordable resources. And then you can always take yourself deeper with deeper, bigger trainings with, you know, our work, with the Shameless Sex Girls. And um, there's just an abundance of learning to be had when it comes to your sexuality. I was working with a, a male client the other day and he's like, I am a 40 year old man and I don't know any of this stuff. I was working with a 62 year old woman the other day and she was like, I have never learned any of yeah. this stuff. I mean, there's just so much that we don't know when we don't know what we don't know. And so... Yeah. Dive in, get your feet wet. If you're like looking at our freebie and you're like, I already know all this stuff. I want something more. Reach out to us and let us know because we've got a vast, vast cornucopia of information to share with y'all. Um, so go out there and pick up Shameless Sex, the book. Today. Get the audio book. I want to get the audio book. I want to hear them read it. Yeah. I know. It'll be fun to hear them read it. Yeah. 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 All right. Have a beautiful day. Much love, love, love. Thanks for tuning in. This episode was hosted by Tantric Sex Master Coach and Positive Psychology Facilitator, Leah Piper, as well as by Chinese and Functional Medicine Doctor and Taoist Sexology Teacher, Dr. Willow Brown. Don't forget, your comments, likes, subscribes, and suggestions matter. Let's realize this new world together. Hey guys, what would it be like if you could last 10 times longer when you're having sex? We are going to teach you how to gain massive confidence as a lover, all without performance anxiety, gimmicks, or prescription. This course is perfect for you if you've ever been mortified by a sexual encounter that ended way too early. Or if you've ever avoided intimacy out of fear that you won't last as long as your lover desires. Or maybe you long to give your partner multiple orgasms, but can't last long enough to make that a reality. Well, good news. We've got your back and it's in our course last 10 times longer. Go to sexreimagine.com forward slash last dash the number 10 X dash longer.
And for all of our favorite listeners out there, we are giving you a discount, 20% off, y'all. Just put in PODCAST20, all caps, PODCAST20, to get your 20% off of this phenomenal course that you're going to want to review more than once. The link is in the show notes. We cannot wait to see you inside this course. Plus, don't forget, we always got tons of bonuses. See you there.